Tense here. I'm Dallas Fulwa Patterson in a new Soto video game designer. This is the third part of a four video series that will introduce you to the Unity game engine and the process that goes into making your first game. By the end, we're looking to have a video game with a character that we can move, objects we can collect, and a video game to beat. This series is part of a larger initiative from Taking It Global and Imaginative. This initiative is hashtag create to learn that teaches youth digital skills. To learn more about their upcoming projects, check out their Instagram at create to learn or the hashtag create to learn on social media. Before we continue, a land acknowledgement. This series was produced in Brandon, Manitoba on Treaty 2 territory, the traditional lands of the Cree, OG Cree, Anishinaabeg, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and is the homeland of the Métis Nation. This treaty was made in 1871, and to learn more, visit trcm.ca. In this part, we're going to get our character collecting objects, add sound effects for when we jump and collect things, and have some particle effects to show up for some pizzazz. We'll also make it so that our camera follows our character and take advantage of a big level if you've made one. To prepare for this part, you can find or create an image of something you want to collect. Maybe it's bacon, a bug, or a friend. So first, let's get our camera following us. Unity has a ton of powerful packages that you can install via its package manager. While some of these are super technical, it has one that we're particularly interested in. So go to the top where you see window and head to package manager. All of the packages will load up in a second or two. The one we want is Cinemachine, a package for cameras. Select that and click install in the bottom right corner. This will take some time depending on your internet speed, so maybe you could learn how to snap your fingers in that amount of time or something like that. Uh, once it's downloaded, we see that the package has placed a Cinemachine option at the top of our screen. A bunch of packages will do other things, but this is what Cinemachine does. Click on that option, and out of all the options that pop up, select Create Virtual Camera. Now, we have a new game object, CMVCAM1. I don't know what this stands for, but I'm also not one to argue, so let's click on it in our scene hierarchy. We see that it has a ton of complicated looking components. You can tweak these however you want to learn the camera settings, but what we're interested in right now is the follow function. Click and drag your player game object into that, and test it out. Like a farmer, the camera follows the napaduk. Cool. So okay, we have a collectible image in our project window. I'm reusing my star blanket from earlier. Drag that into the scene hierarchy, and now we have a game object of that collectible. We need to add a collider component to it so that we're able to collect it, like a Super Mario coin. Click on that collectible game object, and in the inspector, add a Circle Collider 2D component. Make sure it ends with 2D. Now, in Super Mario, the coins don't block your path, you can phase right through them without losing your momentum. To do this in Unity, set the Collider component to Is Trigger. This will make it so that the object can detect your character and other things, but make it so that it doesn't have a physical barrier like our ground does. The Is Trigger is powerful for triggering events like cutscenes or scripted events. Now all we need to do is create a tag. Tags are used to label game objects, which can be super helpful if we're trying to filter through a bunch of information, or a bunch of game objects. In the inspector, at the top, click on Tag, and go to Add Tag. We're shown a list of tags to choose from, but we want to add our own. Let's call it Collectible, for originality. Once doing so, we just need to set our Collectibles tag appropriately. In Super Mario, there is more than one coin. There's a whole bunch for some reason. But if we wanted to change our collectible during game development, it would be a hassle to change each and every collectible one by one, especially if all we wanted to do is change the color. So what we have to do is change them all at once is create a prefab. Prefabs are copies of game objects that are manipulated to be reusable more than once. By changing the base prefab, we can change all of the copies at once. So, let's click and drag our collectible into the project window to make this happen. Then, let's right click to create a new folder and call it prefabs, or whatever you want. 
let's drag our collectible in there. Great. Now, by doing this, we're being organized and tidy by creating folders related to the game objects that are inside that folder. After some time, games can have a wide array of files and object types, so this is a great way to stay clean. We see that our game object is written in blue in the scene hierarchy, which means it's a prefab. Cool. In our code, we want our character to be able to collide with this collectible and make it disappear afterwards, while also increasing our tally of blankies collected. Let's create an integer for collectible value, which will track how many things we've collected. Like I said before, integers are whole numbers compared to floats, so that we can't collect 1.5 blankies. We can only collect one, two, three blankies. The Unity library has a function called onTriggerEnter2D. By googling this, we can see how it is written. I see that the person has written void onTriggerEnter2D with stuff put in the braces. Earlier, I said that inside braces, a function could specify parameters of information it could take in, and reference this information accordingly. Collider2D references the type of information that onTriggerEnter2D will accept, which is a collision, and then it's giving it a code name of call. So, call is used to reference the collision event. Since we have a tag set in place, let's use it here. Potentially, we could collide into a variety of different things, so we need to specify if we've collided with a specific game object so that a specific action can happen. Let's type if call dot game object dot compare tag braces quotation marks collectible, then something happens. To say this plainly, if our collision's game object has a tag of collectible put on it, then we'll make something happen, and that something we want to happen is increase our collectible value by one to note what we've done, and then destroy it so that we can't keep collecting it. We're doing this because in Super Mario, you can't just keep collecting the same coin after you've collected it. Notice how I'm writing collectible value equals collectible value plus one. Now, this isn't me flexing my typing skills. Uh, computers are very literal machines, so without specifying this, the computer would simply set my value back to zero and add a one afterwards. So instead, I need to add to whatever amount it is at that given moment. Let's test this out with control and S to save, Unity refreshes, and let's play. Bam, it disappears. We see our value go up too in the inspector. Neat, but there isn't much pizzazz. Let's get a sound effect going. Sound effects are made using audio source components, but first we actually need some sounds to choose from. I went to freesound.org, which is a great resource for free sound effects, and I found a sound from my jump and my collect. I clicked and dragged these clips into my project window like I did with the images from before. Let's go back to our code and reference this audio source. Since this is on the same game object as the script, we'll make it a private reference and use code. then we need audio clips to actually play. We can store multiple audio clips in what's called an array. So let's create a public audio clip array using square brackets. The square brackets are used to say, hey, I wanna store multiple items into this reference. We'll name this clips. In Unity, we see that Clips is asking us for a size. Now, this doesn't mean Unity is asking how big or small our audio file is. It's asking how many clips we want to store inside of it. Let's have two sound effects going for a jump and collect. Type two for the size, since we only have two sound effects. And now Unity is asking us for two sound effects. 
To select your sounds, select the adorable circle beside the blank box and it will show you all of the files that fall under an acceptable file type. My challenge for you is to find two sound effects for this as I have done. Jammin! Now, at our collect if statement, we need to add a sound trigger and use a period to access this component's class. Let's type in our code name and use the period. We're looking for play one shot, which will play the sound effect once. Then, we say that our sound effect comes from the clips array. And use the square brackets to specify which one. In this case, zero, because arrays start at zero because they like to be cool. After that, the code wants to know the volume we'll play at. We'll set this to 1f for now, which should be enough. Then I'll copy this command and paste it where my jump is too, and swap the 0 to a 1. Since that's how I've organized my sound effects. And then we test it. And it doesn't work because I don't have an audio source component on my player. An amateur mistake. Then it doesn't work again because I've added the audio source component to the wrong thing. So I'll place my audio source on my player object where my script is. And then it works because I'm perfect and made no mistakes. Now, we're going to create an effect for when we collect things and jump. One way to do this is with Unity's particle system, which is very customizable and powerful. Particle systems are used to display graphics in a variety of different fashions. Honestly, a whole series could possibly be made on this. So right click on the scene hierarchy and go to effects. Click on Particle System, and this will create one for you. How nice. Clicking on it shows us a bunch of dots coming out of this one location. We don't really want this for just a short effect. When we collect, we just want to see a whoosh and a bang translated into graphics. And right now, this is more of a never ending. We can see that this has a lot of options to choose from in our inspector. I'd spend some time with this to get an effect you want, but just to follow along, turn off looping, and alter the duration and start lifetime to something short, like half a second. To see changes from now on, click on play within the scene window. This will play a preview of the changes that we've made. Then change the start size if you want. I changed it to 0.5. I also want to turn up the amount of particles that come out because it looks kind of sad right now. So head to the emission tab in the inspector of our particle system and change the rate over time to 100. Then head to the size over lifetime tab and select one of the templates available to you, like I do. I like when particles get smaller over time, so I've selected the bar that goes diagonally down towards the right. Then I want this effect to be like a circular explosion, so head to the shape tab and change the shape to a sphere. Great, I'm satisfied with this. It's amazing, but not for everyone. If you like, definitely spend some more time on this to get an effect that speaks to your soul. I'm going to rename this game object to Collect E, short for Collectible Effect, since this is an effect. I don't want it to appear far away from the point of action, so click on Collect E and open its Transform in the Inspector tab. Click on the gray gear in the top right and hit Reset Transform. This will recenter the game object in our scene. This is an important step because if we're going to make this game object pop up in various locations, this offset could potentially make it so that it pops up a few meters away. 
Now, make a prefab out of this object once again by dragging it from our scene hierarchy into the project window. We can delete this game object from our scene because we're going to what they call instantiate. Since this is just a prefab, it is also a game object. So in our code, create a public reference to a game object and give it a code name. This will be our effect. From searching Unity scripting API, I found an article on instantiating. I took some code and knew it needed to be changed. This version instantiates an object at specific coordinates, but we want this to instantiate where we are at any given moment. Let's head back to our code. I'm typing in var e, since I don't want this game object to exist forever. If it did, after two hours of playtime, there would be thousands of e game objects that I didn't need. So we're going to set e to the result of our instantiation. I copied and pasted this code, but I can explain. The instantiate command is looking for something to prefab, a place to put that prefab, and a specific rotation. So I changed my prefab to collect E, the code name of our particle effect. Then I specify that I want this to appear at my player's position. I know that the position is located within the transform component attached to the player. Quaternion.identity is a complicated way of saying rotation. And so the rotation is going to be the base rotation that my particle effect already has. So if I made my particle effect with an axis of 45, that's how it would spawn. Just like our collided object, we'll destroy this game object after a certain amount of time passes. And we could only do this by using a variable E earlier. Let's test this out. Cool, cool, it works. Let's make it so that this same effect happens when we jump too. This is just a matter of copy and pasting two lines of code and putting it where the jump happens in my script. Now, whenever I jump and collect things, the same effect plays. You could definitely expand on this idea by having effects happen wherever, whenever, and why ever you want. So that's all there is for this part. Next time, we'll finish our game by making it so that we can lose, win, and have text on screen to display handy information. I'm not Alice, I'm Dallas with a D, and we'll see you next time. Hi, hi.